Presley. Uh, this is sort of what a mercy seat looks like. We're going to talk about it, a little rendition of what one might look like. We're going to talk about it today. The mercy seat, it's the place where God and man meet. The place where God and man meet. And believe it or not, guys, if you'll listen today, if you'll give me your time today, this will answer all kinds of theological questions you might have. It'll, it'll answer, am I good enough to go to heaven? Do I have to do this to go to heaven? Can I keep myself going to heaven? It's going to really help you today when you understand something about the mercy seat today. Y'all listening? Yes or no? You ready to go? Say. Come on, here we go. The mercy seat, the place where God and man meet. We're going to ask Roger to roll because i got quite a bit of stuff today. 1 John 4 be in the Scriptures a lot in the New Testament, but quite a bit in the Old as well. And this was manifested the love of God toward who? Toward us. Because that God sent His what? Only begotten Son into the world. That's what Christmas is all about. Right? Say, Jesus coming. God sent His only Son into the world that we might live how? Through who? Through Him. Now, herein is love. I, I say this a lot when I pray and before I pray or in my prayer. Herein is love, not that we loved who, but that he what? He loved us, and then here's a big word. Hang on to your seat now. And he sent his son to be the propitiation. Can you say that with me? Propitiation. That's not a word we use around the planet propitiation for our sins very important word okay want to look at it today that word propitiation God loved us first and sent his son to be the propitiation for us that word for propitiation is the same exact word as the word what well look at that yeah it's the same word in the Greek, as the word mercy seat is back in the Hebrew. Same word, same idea. So he sent Jesus Christ, his son, to be our what? Our mercy seat. Well, isn't that nice? Well, it sounds really good, except we might not know anything about the mercy seat. That's the problem, right? Say yes or no. Well, he sent Jesus to be the mercy seat. Well, that's really nice, but what is that? Oh, well, that's everything. Let's talk about it. What does that word propitiation of the word mercy seat mean? It means to appease God's wrath. He sent Jesus to appease the wrath that God had against all mankind. See, God's holy and we're sinners. Is that correct? Yes or no? And there's an anger and there's a, there's a holy, righteous separation as well. So God sent Jesus to be the propitiation of mercy seat. That means to appease His wrath. The word propitiation means to pay in full. Almost all the way or all the way? All the way. Pay in full the demands of God. What God demanded for sin and for our sin. Jesus Christ paid in full for us what God demanded from us because we're sinners. This is a big deal, guys. I know it's a little deep, but it's a big deal. It means the price is what? The price is what? We talked about mercy last week. There's a whole message on mercy. Okay? No one can make you give mercy. When someone has hurt you and you choose to let it go, to forgive them, to move on, and to just say, hey, this is done, it's over, it's behind you, it's, it's, it's gone, I forgive that, only you can show that mercy. Okay? Mercy, the price is paid. God gave His Son for us to pay the price in what? Full. Did you hear me or not? Okay, now let's keep walking. So what is the mercy seat? Well, if it's called the mercy seat, it was in the Old Testament, and yet you're telling me this word in the New Testament, propitiation, is the word mercy seat. What is the mercy seat? Please don't go to sleep on me. This was a lot of hard work. Okay? So what is the mercy seat, and where is the mercy seat? Let's go back. Here we go. To the Old Testament. And they shall make an ark or a box of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length, and a cubit and a half the breadth, and a cubit and a half the height. We'll talk about it. 
you shall put in this ark or this chest the testimony or the covenant which I shall give you, God speaking, and thou shalt make a what? There it is. Sit. And you shall make a mercy seat of what? Pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims, or little angelic creatures, renditions of gold, of beaten work. Thou shalt make them in the two ends of the what? There it is again. Keep looking. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the what? On top of the chest. Got it? Yes or no? Keep looking. And in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. Oh, and look at verse 22. And there I will meet with you. Well, look at that right there. The mercy seat. The place where what? God and man what? Meet in the Old Testament. Inside the tabernacle. There was a veil in the Holy of Holies, and inside, when you walked past this veil, was that box. And on top was this seat called the what? Mercy seat. That's where I'm going to meet with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Leviticus. Some more scripture. And the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron, who was the high priest, that he comes not at times into the holy place or holy of holies within the veil before the what? Mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. Sit in a place you could just go. You couldn't go behind this veil inside that tabernacle and just walk right in into the mercy seat. Do you understand me or not? God told Moses, you tell him, don't do that. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Keep looking. And he shall take of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger. So they sacrificed at a place called the brazen altar outside in the tabernacle. Outside. And you have the blood. The high priest would have the blood. Now you need to listen to this. I don't like blood no more than you like sprinkling of blood. But listen to me. It's very important. He shall take the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger upon the what? On the mercy seat, eastward, and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger how many times? Seven times. The high priest would do this on the mercy seat. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood then within the veil. And do with that blood as he did the blood of the what? Bull. Oh, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an a what? Boy, that's a good word, isn't it? And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goes in to make an atonement into that holy place until the high priest comes out and has made atonement. Read this part with me. For who? For himself, for his house, and for all, all the congregation of Israel. The mercy seat. Keep moving. Reading some scripture. And we're digging a little deeper. You all right so far? I mean, like, oh, my head's going to pop. You're going to make it. Here we go. So the mercy seat is where God and man meet. Did you get that? Isn't that what he said in Scripture? This mercy seat, I'm going to be above in a cloud. And the high priest is going to come in. He's going to do this. And I'm going to meet with him. You understand? That's going to happen. Keep moving. The Ark of the Covenant. By the way, how many have ever heard the, of the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant, sure. The Ark of the Covenant is missing. It's never been found. They've made probably more searches for the Ark of the Covenant than any other thing on the planet. Never found it. The Ark of the Covenant is that 
box. That's the Ark of the Covenant. If you ever wonder what the Ark of the Covenant is, it is this what we're talking about today. It is this box or this chest, and on top it has something called the what on it? The mercy seat. So you understand, yes or no? Keep looking. The Ark of the Covenant was the most important piece in all the tabernacle. It was made of acacia wood covered with gold. We saw that already from the Scriptures. It resembled a cedar chest. It was about... Four feet long and two feet high. We still make chests like that, and we put some kind of cushion on top of them a lot of times, and we actually sit on it sometimes. Do we do that, yes or no? Sure we do. It looked like that. It contained several objects inside, the most important being the two stones in which was written the what? The Ten Commandments were inside this Ark of the Covenant. The lid of this box was made of solid gold and was called the... How many of you have already, just be honest with you, have already learned a good bit so far? Let me see your hand. So we're learning, ain't we, church? Come on. We're learning. Wow, the mercy seat, the place where God and man meet. Come on. This has something to do with you today. You'll see. Keep looking. Now, on top of the box stood two golden angelic cherubim. Don't really know what they looked like, but that was the way it was. Now, we read a little scripture about Aaron, but once a year during the great day of atonement in October the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies. It was separated by a thick what? How many remember when Jesus resurrected and remember all that and was crucified? And the, the something happened in the temple. The veil was what? It was torn in two. See, you understanding this, you might, mm, some yeah, something might be starting to connect. Now, wait a minute. So once a year during the great day of atonement in October, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies, separated from the holy place by a thick veil. And he would sprinkle blood upon the mercy seat for the sins of who? And we also found out for his own sins and for his family's sins. Okay? Now, above the entire ark would dwell, and here's the word, the Shekinah glory of God. Do I understand how all this happens? No. Do I believe it? Absolutely. The glory of God was above that box. And two cherubim out of gold on either side. What a sight. Now perhaps the most thrilling truth is seen right here. The one thing that stood between the broken law that was in that box that man could never keep and the holy and righteous wrath of God up here was something called the what? The mercy seat. Did you see that? Say, between that law and that box and God's glory which was up here was a lid, and that lid was called the what? The mercy seat. Amen? So keep that in mind. Now the mercy seat, I'm moving now. I'm going to try to make some plain English out of some of this. The mercy seat was a seat, but no one ever sat on it. Things like that always bother me. Why you call something that if you ain't sitting on it? Say, does that make sense to you? So the mercy seat was a seat, but nobody ever sat on the what? On the seat. Keep looking. The high priest certainly didn't sit on the mercy seat, did he? Say. Was the high priest sinless? Yes or no? Was the high priest a sinner? Yes or no? Yes. Is any priest or preacher on the planet a sinner? Yes or no? Absolutely. Okay? All right, so he, he sure couldn't put his rear end on it. You listening to me? Say. Come on. Now the high priest, he was just a man himself. And he needed atonement for who? Himself and for his family and for everybody else. The high priest could not, here's our word again, he could not propitiate God. Okay? He was not righteous enough, was he, to appease God? Was this sinful man, the priest, righteous enough to appease God? Yes or no? Okay? So God had something else that he came up with because he's God. And that was once a year you're going to come in and you're going to offer a sacrifice and you're going to do it the way I tell you. You're going to sprinkle blood on the what? And I'm going to choose to forgive you this way because I'm a righteous God and I can do what I say I'm going to do because I'm righteous. But what I say is always right. So he forgave by the sprinkling of what? Blood. Keep looking. To appease God's wrath or to meet God's demand for sin took something more than, a, than something that a man could do. 
Okay? It took something more. It took this right here. Say that with me. It took what? Now say that again. It took, it took blood. It took him sprinkling that blood. It took blood. It took blood. Now I know that sounds a little crazy to some of us, but keep looking. It took blood. Leviticus 17.11. We don't like to talk about blood. It's funny how we are. How many don't like to see blood? You just don't like to see no blood. You see some blood, you ain't looking no blood. Okay? Listen. But how many are happy to get some blood when you need some blood? Say, let me put you in. You, I got to have me some blood. Give me some blood. And the doctor says, you need three pints of blood. You're going to die. Well, where did I give me? Give my arm. Give my arm. We're funny, ain't we? Listen. Look at this incredible verse. You ought to memorize this verse. You ought to write this verse down. Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the what? Blood. Did you know that's the only thing that will work inside of you? Did you know that? Say, man, so creative. Oh, we're just a big bang. We came from a blob. We're all this. You can't even figure out what to put inside of you to keep you alive. You think you could with all the fluids on this planet. Try to stick something else in you deader than a hammer. Is that true or false? I hope I'm talking out of turn here because I'm not a medical person. Okay? Listen. The life of the flesh is in the what? And I have given it to you upon the altar to make what? See, this, the high priest, you know, he didn't give that, that animal to God. God gave that animal to us. I'm giving you that blood of that animal to come in here and make atonement because life is in blood. I want you to see something, he says. Every time you see that, I want you to know your life is in the blood. And it comes from me in the blood, in the blood. Of the doorpost, remember? In the Exodus, they were to take what and put on the doorpost? The what? They were sprinkle what on the doorpost? Blood, blood. Life's in the blood. So what are they putting on the mercy seat? They're sprinkling what on the mercy seat? Blood. See, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood. What a great verse. That makes what? Atonement for the soul. But we still are so screwy in our thinking. We think us living a good life or some good works is going to make atonement for our soul. Try that when you go to the doctor. When he tells you you need to do, have four pints of blood, tell him this. Oh, no, I don't. I live a good life. Won't you try that? Say. He's going to say, no, you're stupid. You need the blood. You get to heaven one day, and you're going to tell God, oh, you, 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 hey, I've lived a good life. He's going to go, no, you're stupid. You needed the blood, and you don't have it. Depart from me. I don't even know you. Are you getting a connection now with the mercy seat? And if we're not careful, this, this kind of stuff can be something we don't talk about, think about, we read it, we pass over it, we don't understand it. And it really helps us. I think it's incredible to help us realize we don't have anything to do with keeping ourselves saved. It's by His mercy He saved us, and we're saved because of the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Say, y'all understand that or not? This is huge. This is gigantic, isn't it? Say, what we're talking. What what a what a stress reliever that is. Say, isn't that amazing? You mean if I believe in you, Jesus, you'll forgive my sins forever, and I can live with you, and you'll accept me. And Jesus says, absolutely, I will. That's why I died for you. That's incredible. Are y'all hearing me? Keep looking. So the mercy seat was a seat, but nobody sat on it. The mercy seat was also a what? It was a lid. It was a covering to the top of that box. It was a lid. Keep looking. Come on. The same word, very interesting, the same word for lid or covering is literally the word atonement. The top of that box, the mercy seat, propitiation to appease God's wrath, it's the same word we get the word atonement. Jesus Christ has made atonement for our sins. Do you understand that today? Do you see how this all now works together and God's not as crazy as people want to make him out to be? Say, pretty interesting. The mercy seat. Now, what are we going to do these last few minutes? I know you feel like you've been at church all day, but it ain't but 20 after. 20 after? 
man. <laughs> Come on. Now let's connect some dots. Can we connect some dots from what we talked about? Let's connect some dots. I've been trying to connect as we've walked. But well, let's make sure we make sure what we're talking about here. Keep looking. Roger's connecting some dots. I said, Roger, what is that? What did you make? He says, I have no idea. He was just doodling. Roger does that. He's just playing. There we go. But let's connect some dots, okay? The mercy seat is the place where God and man meet. And Jesus is the what? There's that word again. Propitiation for our what? And we know that word means to appease God's wrath. To pay God's demand in full. So Jesus is our what? Propitiation for our sin. Did it put your name in there? Did you take care of your own sin? Say, yes or no. Did you do that? Say, uh-uh. Who did it? He's the propitiation for our sins. He's the mercy seat for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here's our verse again. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the what? The mercy seat for our sins. You're seeing now when you read your Bible, wow, the glory of God, the law, the Ten Commandments that I struggle with keeping, right? We always are struggling with these laws, right? And doing right. And, but wait a minute, the glory of God and that law, there's something right there called who? Jesus or the mercy seat. Pretty good, right? I like Merry Christmas. That's a good Christmas present right there to get this in your heart this Christmas. Wow. That's why when somebody, they, they're well-meaning and it's okay, I understand where they're coming from when they say happy holidays. You know, somebody said it to me the other day and I went, Merry Christmas! Because it means so much. Because I understand what Christmas is. It's not just about that little baby. It's about the life of the flesh is in the blood. He came and was born of that woman so he could have what? Blood. And he shed his what? Blood for me. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing thought, Christmas. Amen? So he's our propitiation. Jesus propitiated God. Could the high priest propitiate God? Could the high priest appease God? Here I am, look at me. Could he do that? No. But Jesus could. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well what? See that? Yeah. Okay? Jesus appeased the wrath of God. Jesus paid in full the demands of God for us. That's who he is. So we're connecting some dots now. Are you seeing it? It looks like now all the dots go back to Jesus. Is that, what, is that what's happening here? It says all these dots are going back to him. Him. The price is paid because of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to hear me out. Jesus died on the cross. That wasn't enough. Jesus resurrected from the dead. That wasn't enough. Jesus' blood was offered to God upon the mercy seat for us. That wasn't enough. God the Father accepted the blood sacrifice of His Son for us. That was enough. Did you understand how that just worked right there? Okay? Well, I don't like that blood of Jesus, religion, blood. Well, then you're just shot is what you are. Amen. Say, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus gave His blood on the mercy seat. How all that worked out with God and Him, I don't understand it all, but... God looked at that and said, I accept that forever, paid in full for humanity. What a great thing, huh? That's why salvation is simple. That's why it's simple. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, what? Should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, it's up to you to believe. That's pretty simple, isn't it? 
And that's what this message is about today. It's about you believing in Jesus. It's about you putting your faith in Him who did for you what you could not do for yourself. Amen. Say, but you can do this. Have faith in Him. Without faith, it's impossible to what? Please God. So God gives you something you can do and I can do. Oh, I can't appease the wrath of God. I can't propitiate God but I can please God by saying, I believe in your Son. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for raising from the dead for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you, God, for accepting His shed blood on my behalf. Amen? Does that make sense to you? Pretty good stuff. The mercy seat. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's us being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a what? Through what? Faith in His what? To declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him which does what? See, when you come to God and you tell God, I believe in Jesus, God declares you righteous because you believe in His Son, Jesus, who died on the cross, who rose from the dead, who shed His blood, and that blood sacrifice was accepted by God. So when you say, I believe in Jesus, God says, good answer. Amen. Say, do you understand why when you say another religion won't get you to heaven, when you say that's the dead end, you're not being ugly to those people Guys, if a road says, you know, three miles ahead is a Wendy's, but a mile and a half ahead is a cliff. I'm sorry the sign said there was a Wendy's three mile ahead, because a mile and a half, you're going to fall off a cliff, fool, and you ain't never getting your hamburger. You understand? That's country thinking. No matter how well-meaning somebody might say or what somebody might believe, God had one son, his name was Jesus, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he shed his blood, God accepted that blood sacrifice. Hey, yeah, come on, that's a good word. <laughs> Praise the Lord! I mean, we're getting this nailed down, ain't we, say? Now, can God, God can be perfectly righteous in forgiving our sins because of the blood sacrifice. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And so God made a way in the Old Testament. Once a year, this was the way it was. But they had to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. And, uh, but he accepts now the payment in full of his son Jesus who came. It was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. Jesus would come. Jesus came. God accepted his sacrifice. And now you can forever be saved. And there's not a repeat sacrifice every year anymore. Is that understood? All the demands of God were met. And we have been declared what? Righteous. We have been declared what? Righteous. Because of us? No. Because of Him. Because of what He did for us and because we believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Say. People tell you, now you can pray in other names, but don't pray in Jesus' name. I go to the county commission meeting. I won't go to a county commission meeting if they tell me I couldn't pray in Jesus' name. Why would I do that? Say. You might think I'm hard-headed. The point is, I've gone many times, and I always close in Jesus' name, and anybody's shot me yet. Amen. Say. Guys, it's all about Jesus. Can we get with the program? Amen. Say. Come on. Read some scriptures with me real quick. Scriptures that you might find somewhat confusing sometimes in Hebrews. And we're going to build a case on the right-hand side. I'm not going to say him. I'm going to let him build the case. He's going to pop them up for us. By the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever, say it with me, is sat down on the right hand of God. Let's take a quick break. Well, the mercy seat, 
nobody ever sat on the mercy seat. Priest never sat on the mercy seat. Does now that make a little more sense to you when you read your Bible and you find out Jesus Christ? Where's Jesus now? He's what? He's, right, he's seated. Say the word seated. He's at the right hand of God the Father. He ain't standing. Did you get the point? See, he has presented his blood sacrifice and he has sat down on the right hand of God the Father forever. And there he is. He's our advocate right there. Sat down. I believe on the mercy seat. That's my view. I believe you sat down right there. And here's you or me down here. And here's God right here. And here we are. Here's Jesus, our go-between. Is that what the Bible says Jesus is? He's our what? Mediator. There's one mediator between God and man, the man who? Christ Jesus. Yep. Let's keep reading. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Look at that. He's perfected forever them that are sanctified. He did that for us through his blood. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my law in their hearts, not in a box. I'll put it in their hearts. I'll put it in their minds. I'll write in them. And their sins set with me. And what? Iniquities? I will what? Remember, no what? No more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more what? Boy, that's important. Say that again with me. Now where remission of these is, there is no more what? Guys, I know it's hard to imagine. You can crawl on glass. You can try to give your money to get to heaven. It's not going to work, guys. Are you listening to me? There is no more offering for what? There's no more offering for sin. Jesus made the one offering for sin. That's the only offering for sin that's been accepted by God. He's the only one who could propitiate that. He's the only one that could appease God. The offer has been made. The offer has been accepted. Sold. Okay? Yeah, but I'd like to. No. Sorry. It's done. Amen. You got it? Say. Boy, that should free you up to live for God. Instead of trying to buy God, you can't buy God. You can believe in God. <laughs> you can love God. You can't buy God. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. That's the only, that's the only currency that counts. Amen. Say. Keep that in mind. That's a big deal. Let's look at our list. We're sanctified through the offering of Jesus' body. It is once and for all. Jesus offered one sacrifice for sins. For what? Now, did the priest sit down on the mercy seat? Jesus is what? Sat down at the right hand of God the Father. That ought to do something for you. That ought to let you know uh, he feels pretty good about what he did. Amen. Say. Every October rolls around, Jesus isn't getting up and going somewhere and re-offering something. Understood? By one offering, he pro... I don't think that's right, but whatever that word is. Those sanctified forever. Amen? The Holy Spirit is a witness to us. The covenant is in our hearts and in our minds. God remembers our sins what? And that's a big deal. And I don't want to get into it with you today, and it's okay. You can go ahead and believe what you want to believe. I'm going to believe the Bible. You go believe what you want to believe. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you have been forgiven. Well, what about if I sin tomorrow? Well, what about if you sin yesterday? You sin there, you sin here, you're still a sinner. You're a sinner there, you're a sinner next Friday. Is that right, yes or no? How many sin sometimes? You don't even know you're sinning. Can I see your hands? You're going to be a nervous wreck. You're going to jump off a bridge. Okay? Go ahead and nail it down. Rest in the Lord. Does it mean because I'm forgiven I go and just sin at will? God forbid, the Bible says. Live for Him. Amen? 
But know that when you do sin, you have, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. Amen? At the right hand of God the Father. Amen? That ought to really help you today. Praise the Lord. There's no more offering for sin. It's been done. Raj, we should be getting close. I know you think I'm late, but I'm actually earlier than I normally am. We're almost done. If our sins have been remitted, forgiven, and forgotten, then there is no more need to offer sacrifice for sin. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Mercy seat is the place where God and man meet. It means price paid in full. Price paid in full. And then finally, there's some verses that just finish up, and we've got the time just to read them. Having therefore, brethren, now that you know this truth today, now that you've heard it, now that you know what the mercy seat is, okay? Having therefore, brethren, what's that word? Boldness. Come on. What's that word? Boldness. Oh, I'm going to go talk to Jesus. Listen, you got what? Boldness to enter into the holiest. That was called the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, right? To enter the holiness, holiest by the what? Blood of Jesus. By a new and living way. Not the Old Testament every year in October way. Which he hath consecrated for us through the what? Veil. That is to say his what? Flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Is Jesus called the head of the church? Yes or no? Sure he is. We're called the bride of who? See, he's the head over us because of his blood, because of his sacrifice. So now that you know this, come boldly before him. And also, now that you know this, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance, full assurance, guys. Why, why be so wavering in your faith? Full assurance. Having your heart, what? Sprinkled. From an evil what? So many of our past still keep us chained. But to know the blood of God's Son, Jesus, has been sprinkled on my past. It's gone, Gary. You don't have to walk around with that evil conscience. What a, what a release that is. Is that, is that releasing, guys, or what? Come on! And our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold fast our profession. The word can also be called confession. Here's what, it, here's what that means. Let us hold fast our, our confession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful who's promised. Why in the world, when you sin or when you get discouraged or somebody wants to pull up a Bible verse, you need to keep your own salvation or whatever, do you get weak? Do you back off or some other religion? You know, yours ain't the only religion. And so we get a little weak in the knees. Or we like, oh, okay, maybe not. Are you kidding me? You ought to hold fast, baby. Know what you have is the truth. Know you're forgiven. Are you hearing me today? Nothing moves me. I'm saved. I'm, you bet. The Bible already says we're seated in the what? Heavenlies. It says it in Ephesians. I don't understand it, but God says, Gary, you're already seated you got work to do down there, but hurry up and come on. Do you understand? Come on, it's a great, great, great thought. And then look at these last two verses. And let us consider one another to provoke unto what? If Jesus shedding his blood for you and forgiving you, and all he says is believe. If he does all that for you and me, and that doesn't provoke us to love on other people, nothing ever will. That's, our, that's what he's called us to do. Love on people. Now that you've been freed up, you don't have to worry about that. You're my child. Go love on people. Provoke others to love and to good works and serving the Lord. A verse we have learned many years, many of us, not forsaking the what? The assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. See, guys, I didn't come up with the idea of church. God did. God came up with this idea. 
And you know what? I love the fact that he's talking about the mercy seat and all that stuff in Hebrews and that ends with church. It ended with church. Did you just see that? It ended right with church. Don't forsake it. And that brings me back to my final point today, and that is the mercy seat. It's the place where God and man what? People might ask, Gary, why are you building a church? Plenty of churches. Why ain't there no church? Plenty of churches around here. I tell you what, if we can make more places where people can go and meet God, I think that's a good thing. Amen? Come on, I think that's a good thing. I really do. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And that, listen, I want Fellowship Church to be a place where God and man can meet. And you know what? The price has been paid in full. And uh, I look now, when I think, think of those seats we're doing, I look at those as mercy seats. I look at them as mercy seats that we're doing because people are going to come and they're going to hear the Word of God from me and from whoever else is after me or whoever does anything there besides me. Amen? Come on. And they're going to hear the Word of the living God proclaimed and they're going to be sitting there. Wow. You talk about some mercy seats. Amen? So I hope you'll look at the seats like that as, as well. This isn't just, just providing some furniture for a building. This is a big deal. Amen? Say don't you feel good about it? That's why I did the message today on the mercy seat. So, that's what we say. Now, now, why do we preach Jesus here? Why do we preach Jesus and not some other religion? Because there ain't none that works. Amen. Say, the days I've got left, I want to preach what works, and that's Jesus. Amen? Only thing. He's our mercy seat. Guys, I hope you received the message today. Right, would you just praise the Lord if you learned something today and helped yourself today? Come on. Praise the Lord. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.